This is The Breakfast Club, and on the line right now is uh, Jeanette Benjamin. Uh, she's a senior software engineer at Collins Aerospace right down the road in Cedar Rapids. And uh, she's someone who's dealt with something a lot of you have, and that's infertility. That's the, the struggle that families have to try to, uh, to have children. And, and, and endometriosis is an all-too-common reason for that. And uh, Jeanette's going to share her story regarding that. Good morning, Jeanette. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Matt, and good morning, listeners. Well, I really... Thank you for having me. Yeah, I really appreciate you being on because there's so many people that have dealt with what you've dealt with or something of your variety, yet don't talk about it because, you know, it's such a personal deal. So why did you want to start talking about uh, your struggle with in- endometriosis and how you uh, managed to, to conceive? Well, to be honest with you, Matt, it was a struggle for over 20 years. And... Um I didn't know that there were options like the ones that I'm going to discuss here today. So just to start off, over the 20 years with endometriosis and large fibroids, suffering with those uh, issues with a single option given to me by every doctor that I've met during those years was a hysterectomy. I absolutely refuse to accept that I will not have my own children. Unfortunately, over those 20 years, my fibroids grew large enough that I looked pregnant Mm. with unbearable pain, heavy flow, anemia, dizziness, fainting spells, and zero energy, just to name a few. So you had all these physical things going on, plus you had people wondering if you were pregnant, kind of adding to your suffering? Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, so and the quality of my life hung in the balance. I mean, I, I just was not feeling well, and um, I desperately searched the internet for a specialist at that point, where I found Dr. Paul McCool at the Center of Innovative GYN Care, also known as CIGC. So you're dealing with this that not only makes you in, infertile, <clears throat> excuse me, but also um, it really affecting your your life. So so how did you you, you search the internet? But how did you get connected to the good doctor, and where is where was he located? The center of you question. The center of the innovative UN here, CIGC, is actually they have multiple locations. The one that I found was in Rockville, Maryland. Hmm. So I was actually a travel patient, or considered a travel patient, because I'm traveling from Cedar Rapids over to Rockville, Maryland, and the website, if you just Google CIGC in any search engine, there's this website and they have a lot of information on there as to, you know, the different ways they can help women and families struggling with endometriosis and fibroids. And I called one of their numbers and the first person that I spoke to was a lady named Mimi. And she was very friendly and got back to me promptly, putting my mind at ease you know, and then the surgical team from there at CIGC, they just, you know, went ahead and erased everything. So, Jeanette, again, you're talking about uh, this this uh, place where you could go and get this surgery that you desperately wanted that every doctor told you was not going to happen, that you'd have to have a hysterectomy. So uh, you went there and you had the surgery. What were the results? The results were Dr. McCool, he is awesome. He removed 33 fibroids, and the largest being 13 centimeters by 12 centimeters. He saved my uterus. I mean, he he did actually actually what I begged him to do. And after all that was said and done, all of those symptoms that I mentioned before disappeared. And I felt like I got my life back. The only question remained, Matt, was, was my uterus viable? Mm-hmm. after such an extensive surgery. So you got your, your, your health back from the surgery, so I guess uh, this is probably a pretty direct question for me to ask. Was your uterus viable? Well, let's get into that, Matt. After I was denied full IVF treatment at one of our local university hospitals here in Iowa, I desperately reached out to Dr. Paul McCool yet again 
for his help. He went over and beyond the call of duty and referred me to Dr. Lawrence Yuda at Genetics and IVF Institute, also known as GIVF in Fairfax, Virginia, where I did one cycle of IVF, and today I have a healthy and active toddler. Active My toddler, that, that's got to be an understatement. <laughs> oh, yeah. My uterus was, in fact, viable, Matt. That is great news. Again, talking with Jeanette Benjamin about her struggle with endometriosis and the fibroids, uh, the many fibroids that were removed, and then she was able to have a child. And when you talk about that university hospital, we all know talk about the University of Iowa, who we highly respect. They've done some amazing work around here. So for someone to be able to do more than they're able to do really impresses the listeners of this area. Absolutely, and I do hope that my story can help all of the many women and, their, by extension, their families that struggle with this issue. So what is your uh, suggestion for a woman right now that's listening, going, I had so much me, and I, I've, I've wanted to give up. What's your advice for her? Absolutely do not give up. Do not give up. Keep searching. Get another opinion. You know, if one door closes, continue knocking. Something will open up. And, you know, the hard work here was already done. I mean, just, just Google CIGC. They can help you. Absolutely, they can help you. And, uh, you know, you're a, a senior software engineer at Collins Aerospace. We know around here that means you're probably pretty bright. What, would it, what did it take for you to, uh, I guess, believe in yourself so much that you could tell doctors no? Because many of us, we hear doctors, okay, they're smarter than me. They know what they're talking about. I'm going to listen to them. What gave you the courage to do that? I think it's a bit of my personality there, Matt. I, I just don't like to take no for an answer, especially when there's not a logical reason to say no. Mm. I explore all options, and um, I, I just find the, the one that works best for me. All right. Well, Jeanette, we really appreciate you sharing your story. Again, uh, give us the information about uh, the places that you talked about one more time. Okay, so I know it was a lot of acronyms, so I'll go ahead from the from the beginning, the Center of Innovative GYN Care, where you'd find Dr. Paul McCool. The acronym for that is CIGC. And then secondarily, you have the uh, Genetics and Institute for IVF, and that's in Fairfax, Virginia. The acronym for that is, C is GIVF. Just type that into any internet browser and you will be directed to their uh, main website. All right. Well, Jeanette, I really appreciate you being on. We hope that uh, people have been helped by your conversation. I hope that you and your toddler, with all the snow we're going to get tomorrow, uh, get a chance to make some uh, snowmen or something. Oh, yeah. He, he loves the snow. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Once again, that's Jeanette Benjamin talking about her journey through endometriosis and the fibrosing in her body all the way to having an active toddler that she's going to make a snowman with. This is The Breakfast Club.